five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. You want to get into it, Julia? Let's, into let's, let's pod. do it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Hadley Doodley, this is Julia and Marco, and you are listening to Truth, Beer, and Podsequences, the podcast where we recap Cincinnati craft beer podcasts with kind of our own version of the truth on what they're saying. We're hoping that these other podcast hosts don't hold too many grudges against us for poking a little bit of fun at them and their podcasts. As I said uh, a little bit earlier, I am Julia, and I like to write parodies about beer on uh, Facebook groups, and I am with the best co-host in the whole world. Hello. (laughs) Hello, everyone. Uh, If you've listened to the show before, this is Marco. I'm back. Thank you, Julia, for that uh, lovely intro. You are my favorite co-host of Truth, Beer, and Podsequences. I would uh, say I'm your only co-host, but last episode, that all changed a little bit. It did. It, it did. did. We had another co-host. John, you did all right, buddy. Yeah. You did all right. Uh, had fun. It was fun. Yes, I'm Marco. Uh, I'm co-host of Truth, Beer, and Podsequences. I brew beer. I brew beer here locally in Cincinnati. And uh, if there's ever anything that uh, you have an issue with, uh, you can uh, reach out to us. Um, At Raging Hop on Twitter. Correct. Yep. That is, that is the actual um, the uh, comment section. The That's comment where and complaint line. Comment and complaint line mm-hmm. is at Raging Hop on Twitter. If you have compliments, you can find us on any of your favorite social medias at Truth Beer Pod. Yes, all of the 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 ones that I hear all the cool kids are using. A couple of episodes ago, we talked about where the cool kids are going mm-hmm. or what they're doing. We we hope we're capturing their attention so julia marco what'd you listen to last week i listened to a bunch of podcasts about craft beer i did as well nice nice i did as well uh let's go let's talk about let's let's sort of uh a a tennis ball this where maybe you give one and i give one and and sort of back and forth and then uh from there let's let's see how this uh plays out Sounds good to Why me. Why don't you go ahead and serve? Well, before before I serve, while I'm kind of, you know, bouncing the tennis ball with my racket, you know, kind of sizing up the competition here, huge shout out, as always, to our host, BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery. Uh, we love recording here. The background volume today is uh, is fairly low. Our last episode, there were all kinds of parties and amazing things happening here. So sorry if it was a little little tricky to listen to. Let me tell uh, you something. It was loud, and when somebody turns 50, the party gets crazy. Absolutely. So, And for all of you, just uh, contact our producer, Kenny, here at BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery for your um, 50-year birthday parties. He um, will get you hooked up. Yeah, it will be great. Yeah. Um, well, one of the one of the episodes or one of the podcasts that I listened to uh, this past week in between our last recording session and now was the Bruce Traveler Outcast podcast. Trash. No, I, no, not about the podcast. There's some trash oh, over oh, there. Oh. I see I, it. I see it. Yeah. No, that was a great episode. That was, was a live episode. There were two episodes. There was a live episode. And then there was also an episode that they recorded at Paradise Brewing. Well, that... Okay, so we so have there's the there's the the brews travelers there's hustle and brews, mm-hmm. and then we're going to cover is this me uh, returning serve? <laughs> this is the yes yes this is your and returning then serve. We're going to cover many of the people that were present in the audience for hustle and brews are members of the Outcast podcast. Uh, is the is, ball back in my court? I guess I was wondering the same thing. Um, you know what? Oh. Sure. Go ahead. Okay. Serve. All right. Uh, I also listened to Cincy Brewcast, where the gnome went to Streetside Brewing. Trash. Yeah, I don't I, know why all, all this place. trash I keeps I popping up. It's just trash all <laughs> over the place. Sorry. No, it was a great episode. Yeah, we're gonna we're we're gonna cover that. Uh, Balls back in your court. What else? Uh, what else you got? You know what? There's a special episode of the Craft Parenting Podcast. We're gonna cover some special news. Uh, I don't think we're going to take too much time, but we certainly want to mention that news and 
uh, let everybody know uh, what's going on with the Craft Parenting Podcast that was released this past week. Yes. And last, but certainly not least, Shift Beers had another gut-busting Gas Station Singles episode that came out. Wow. Those are always a lot of fun. Um, So we'll see what uh, what kind of trouble they got themselves into this time. Yeah, we're going to fill you in on all of that, and hopefully you uh, can stick with us and and you know bear through uh the i mean what it is trash uh, yeah well, i mean what oh, it is we do it, yeah over over on that side over there not what they were well i guess what they were drinking God, was kind so of many, trash too there's so but few people here and there's so much, so much trash, trash. <laughs> okay well before we get into the podcast uh, this is a beer podcast we would yeah. be remiss if we didn't let all of our listeners know what we had in our glasses as we uh as we talk about these wonderful shows. So, Marco, what what's in your glass tonight? What are you starting off with? So something new on the board here at BC's Montgomery is Weinstefan Fest Beer, uh, 5.8%. Mm-hmm. And I think, is, it, is Weinstefan the one that says they're the oldest brewery? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, Let's that's, that's a short truth. No, uh, th- this is a beer that when it comes up locally, I'd love to have it and certainly... They're not pouring it out of bottles. They're pouring it out of kegs. Mm-hmm. So uh, that sort of weird skunkiness that you get from bottles traveling uh, across the universe is not present. It's a very refreshing fest beer. And I, the past few years, if I see it on draft, I, I, I grab it. And there's another. There's an earlier episode where you and I talked about the fact that mm-hmm. you know a, a, a wing chain last year was serving it by the by the, by the boot. leader. Yes. By the leader. Yes. And uh, so I'm having one tonight. This is the first day I've seen it on at BC's Montgomery. Shout out to BC's Montgomery, our host. Come on out here and get you some Weinstefan Oktoberfest. What are you drinking, Julia? Uh, I am drinking something that has absolutely nothing to do with Oktoberfest or the slowly coming fall season at all. I am drinking an Imperial Milkshake IPA from Miss Pillion Brewery called McLovin Mango. It's a it's very delicious, very fruity, clocking in at 7.5%. It's good stuff. All right. Good stuff. Nice. Uh, good enough to get it started, right? Hell yeah. All right, Julia. So All right, Marco. what's going to be the first podcast we talk about? What do you say we take out the trash first? Yeah, let's do that. And I don't mean to, inter- you know, I don't mean to anyone take it the wrong way. I mean, we take gotta, we gotta the the gas station singles. There's something oh trash yeah, get rid of the that. trash. So, Good God! So we're gonna take out the trash first with the uh, gas station singles episode fifty of Fitty. shift beers. Fifty, yeah, yeah, they did good. They did good. So as we talked about the last time we got together, they had their podcast anniversary, and then you mm-hmm. went and, and mashed that together to. Pod diversary. Yes, podcast diversary. Podcast diversary. You know, making up words and pronouncing things correctly. That's what we're all about here so, at Truth Beer and Consequences. So they had the whole team together. Mm-hmm. You know, whole squad was present. Josh running the running the ones and twos. You got uh, Beth uh, bringing bringing the Mad Burps with uh, amazing earrings. It sounded like yeah, it I sounded wanted, like I amazing was, earrings. I was. Kind of sad that they didn't post any picture on the social medias of those earrings. I really don't know why so they Beth, didn't. So Beth, Josh, Brian, Chris, get on that. I want to see those things. Yeah, and so Julie just named everybody else that was present for the show. Didn't mean to so, steal your thunder there. What up, BC? The BC. Hello, and BCs producer just Ben Coomer, BC. Puts the BC in BCs just walked in. So we're blessed today to have both producer Kenny and producer B. See Ben Comer. Last week, I do apologize to our producers that we did not shout them out. I will tell you part of the reason is we were discombobulated by having a guest. Second reason is they were extremely busy uh, with that uh, birthday party. So uh, please, again, shout out to BC's. Plan your birthday parties at BC's. Uh, so everyone was present. Everyone was there. The hologram, the button, uh, Brian was there. They talked about uh, drinking. Mm-hmm. You know, they did the drinking, and uh, uh, Chris and Button Brian were at the same event. There was a concert. There Julia- was a concert. Yeah, there was there was a concert. Uh, we kind of talked about this a little bit um, 
on uh, on last week's episode since we recorded after uh, after the concert took place, but got a chance to to talk to them and it was a great time. And uh, <laughs> did you have any twisted tea? Because I guess everybody was having twisted tea. Everyone was having twisted tea, but me. Um, I did not. It was it was hot. It wasn't. Too, Were you the DD or something? No, but when the drinks are that expensive, we just figured save our money and remember the show. So, so no, no. My Josh and I, we did not drink during the concert. We just you didn't enjoyed take any it. of the Patreon funds to put towards the uh, the you no, know no because concert no drinks? because those Patreon funds are for us, not for my own entertainment purposes. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fair Speaking enough. Speaking of Patreon, Shift Beers now has a Patreon, so they do. They do. Feel free to to chip in, subscribe to their Patreon, support them, help them buy more beer to to drink and talk about and to keep all of the fun going. I, I am really excited to see the kind of bonus content that they're going to be putting out uh, for Patreon so they subscribers. So have, they have a, a $5 uh, contribution, mm-hmm. which is, I think, is it buy a pint? Buy a pint for them, yeah. And then yeah. there's a, I think it's a $10, $10. buy a mm-hmm. six-pack. Mm-hmm. And then there's, I think it's a $20. Eight, was it $18.99 to buy a case? Yeah. Buy a case for the show. Yep. And then there's a $499, mm-hmm. which is to contribute to where you want Chris to actually murder somebody. Yes. Yes. And they do bring up in the show Chris's past... Murderness. Um, murdering. Which I don't know if that was really a good idea for him to freely admit to repeatedly on the show. Josh was very uncomfortable. I was very uncomfortable. And it wasn't even my grandpa. Well, you know, player's going to play. It's true. It's so, I mean, I wouldn't fuck with Chris. <laughs> Although, if I wanted someone murdered, Chris would probably be the guy that I would go to to get the job done. Oh, I thought you were saying Chris. <laughs> no, I you were no, going to no, say no, something no. different there. No. No, we love Chris. No. Chris, we love you. And please don't murder us. Yeah, don't murder us. Yeah. So... It, so it's gas station singles, right? Mm-hmm. So the intent of the show is to inflict uh, liquid pain on each other. And the pain can come from uh, something that has maybe uh, some, some, uh, some heat. Mm-hmm. M- more of, more to, the, to the true nature of it, it is pain from a, uh, I don't want to say culinary standpoint, but pain from a standpoint of... They're Why would anybody drink this? Yes, yes. And I, and I do love that the way they started off the episode, their shifties were high lives. Yeah. So, again, that that's not a terrible-ish beer. It's not a gas station single. But they took that, that kind of, why would anyone drink this, through the entire episode. The other thing is they started right from the beginning um, leading into just you know, really fantastic burps. And oh, yeah. it, it sort of petered out towards the end. But I think what happened is they all were so fatigued from just the god-awful um, um, nectar they were putting inside their bodies that they just they weren't mustering the same sort of, of carbon dioxide expulsion that, you know, they really started... Mm-hmm. Well, do we, do we want to go over the, the, the burp count first? Because they had, and I, I counted, I was actually watching. Well, that's watching what we the do, clo- Julia. Well, but I was watching the clock while I was counting. The first 10 minutes, 15 burps. That is almost a third of the burps in the entire episode in the first 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so they started strong. Oh, well, very really what strong. Happens. Very strong. Did, Julie, do you want to cover for anybody who may be new to Truth, Beer, and Pod Sequences? And if you're new to Truth, Beer, and Pod Sequences, thank you. We really appreciate you coming on board. Stick with us. Let me tell you something. Uh, it's, it's, it's like uh, beer for your ears. Mm-hmm. So hang in there with us. Julia, let the, let the audience know, the new audience, and just refresh everybody's mind on what we're talking about when we talk about counting burps with shift beers. Yeah, so we... After listening to a couple episodes of Shift Beers, we determined that there needed to be some sort of drinking game around Shift Beers. There are a ton of opportunities for things that they repeatedly say and do and bring up in every episode that you could drink to, such as whenever Chris's you know, early onset dementia pops in and he doesn't remember something he said five minutes ago, to every time you know, a, a button is pushed 
for for Brian to say something. But then we realized we need to go big or go home if we're going to have a shift beers drinking game. And so we came up with the burp count. The average drink of liquid, beer, alcohol, what, whatever. Motor oil. Motor oil, whatever, whatever you know, your, your libation of choice is, is about two ounces. So if you take a two-ounce drink for every burp, we counted those up to see how many pints you would be drinking in the course of one of their episodes. This episode, it was, it was a pretty good number. I already said that they had 15 burps in the first 10 minutes. Yep. They ended the episode with 43 burps. All right. Which, based off of the magical maths that I mentioned earlier, 5.375 pints of beer in that slightly over an hour long episode. It was about an hour that's and an, 20, yeah. hour and 26, somewhere around there. You can a little get over, the, Yeah, a little over five pints. And that's, that's a good night. That's good stuff that's right good there. That's good stuff, yeah. That, yeah. That'll get you started. Oh, yeah. So congratulations on the uh, burp achievement. Mm-hmm. And what it, it was really cool to see in the beginning, they were really revved up uh, oh, yeah. to get that burp count up. And then their minds just totally went to goo. Once they started drinking, just the horrid uh, oh, liquid. Yeah, I mean, uh, can you blame them really? No, but no. the thing is, there's so many, there's so many craft breweries in the, in the Cincinnati area. There's so much good stuff to drink, and the point of the show is to drink bad stuff. But just keep that in mind as you travel around to your favorite Cincinnati craft breweries. Mm-hmm. When you drink the 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 truly, you know, the artisan beers that you're given, and Maybe it's not your thing. Yeah, but it's well, you still could, good. Yeah, you could it's be drinking quality. that garbage uh, for, you know, two for five out of the out of the gas station cooler. So, yeah. so slow, I mean, re- slow down on any uh, jerk uh, comments. And I mean, really, props to the shift beer, you know, group for taking one for the team, for all of us drinkers, for trying those beers that they even said have been sitting collecting dust for God knows how long in those single coolers. They drank what none of us ever will just to give us entertainment. Now, I do think that it comes across very clearly that there is a little fatigue uh, with this concept. Now, n- no doubt that they lo- love the concept mm-hmm. for a shock value and for the response. Uh, but I think everybody there at Shift Beers feels like there's a, a little bit of a fatigue. I think this is going to go away for a little while. The plan which they hash out on the show is that as everybody goes around and does their normal everyday routines, if you see something new, different, or just, you know, stands, uh, stands out at uh, one of the gas station coolers, grab it. Mm-hmm. We'll get to it in the future at some point. Or it may even be a Patreon bonus episode, kind Correct. of a mini. They do it every now and then as a, you know, we cannot do an entire show based around this anymore, but... I mean, it is enjoyable. I do love, and I feel bad saying I love hearing them suffer as they drink this, but I mean, it it is funny. It it, it does make for a good podcast episode, and I'm glad they're not going to do away with it completely, but I would like the linings of their stomachs to remain mostly intact so that they can continue to, to drink for years to come. And I'm sure that's what they're wanting as well. Yeah. And so... Hey, great episode, episode 50 to mm-hmm. Ship Beers. Congratulations on episode 50. Hell yeah. Uh, you know, thank you right from the get-go for, you know, uh, throwing a little jab at uh, yeah. the Truth Beer Podsequences family. Just yeah, know. Appa- apparently, you know, podcasts that talk about podcasts talking about podcasts is lame as fuck. So, noted. We will, uh, yeah. we will remember that going forward. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, catch you soon, guys. And if you see Josh, ask him about goblins. Yes. It is something that uh, that they that they talked about a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ask them at it, it, yes, specifically goblins. And I do want to throw out Beth's bonus beer. She was the only one that brought a bonus beer because I think they all knew that they wouldn't, their stomachs couldn't handle more drinking after the crazy shit that they had. I mean, they had a, another swirl. I know. I saw that. And if you follow them on social media, you get a picture of the of all of it yeah. of the graveyard there and. My goodness. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, Beth's bonus bonus beer definitely made up for it. Um, listen to the episode. Find out what she brought. It, I, it's something that I've never had. 
it didn't necessarily hold up as well as I think they were all hoping, but I still feel like it was it was a, a, an uplifting ending for sure to the disappointing beers that they yes. drank for the entire yes, episode. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And Beth, if if the team that uh, that you're on the show with doesn't appreciate it, uh, you know another team you can reach out to and maybe see if we'd appreciate it. Yeah. Excellent. So yeah. Um, that is. That is shift beers. That is shift beers. Yeah. Tell you what, um, the past few shows we've had some sponsors. This show, uh, we are sponsorless. I just want to say for a not uh, sponsored segment, we are not sponsored by Narrow Path Brewing, award-winning brewery out of uh, Loveland. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, Julie and I, certainly love what you're doing out there, uh, but have not heard back on any uh, sponsorship requests. Um, really. It's very simple. All we're looking for is a beer to promote on the show mm-hmm. and a drink as we go through the the, the litany, the, the, the assortment of all of the craft beer podcasts that I'm sure everyone at Narrow Path loves. And so, hey, Narrow Path, just get in touch with us. So speaking of Narrow Path, they have a beer named after the next podcast that we're going to talk about. Julia. Marco. Do you have news? Are you breaking news? I am breaking news, breaking the news that Narrow Path Brewing has, and they've had for a while, so this really isn't news news, but for some people they may not be aware that this is the the origin of it. They have a Vietnamese coffee stout called Brews Traveler, which was created after talking to the members of the Brews Traveler Outcast podcast, which is the podcast that we will be covering next. <laughs> All right, that's pretty awesome. So, Bruce Travelers Outcast podcast is a bunch of outcasts that are that are associated with the podcast, and everyone has an alias. You know, I, I quick trip. Uh, Mark Miller, fantastic guy. Oh, I yeah. mean, you and I uh, spent uh, time, you know, talking with him and enjoying beers and all that. I mean, Mark Miller, it, it, super dude, mm-hmm. uh, it, very he, talented musician as well as an amazing podcaster. Love how he throws these shows together. Yeah, and yeah. I and we're gonna. It, I don't think I'm. Maybe I am breaking news, but mm-hmm. uh, he is now part of the wonderful uh, small distributing company, which continues to grow. So they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, I love the folks at Adina Distributing. They are amazing people bringing amazing beer into Cincinnati. So now Mark is part of Adina Distributing. That's awesome. So that's that. That's another good thing. So if Mark or Adina or Mark as Adina wants to sponsor a segment of our show, we yeah. are open to non-Cincinnati beers. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's other members of the Outcast podcast. They, they, they all have aliases, and 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 it's fun. And uh, so, uh, which show are we going? Because we have two shows that we're going to talk about. We right? do. We do one that we're going to cover in depth or as in depth as we do here on Truth Beer and Pots of Quests and one that we're just going to hint a little bit at because if you weren't present when it happened you'll have to wait for it to be released to get the full picture so we are going to talk about their trip their brews travels to Paradise Brewing uh, and they talked with Jeff Graff from Paradise Brewing have you ever been to Paradise Brewing or had any of their other beers so I have had Paradise Brewing beers at since he winter beer fest, uh, so that would be 2018, 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, Same. So I had the beers; they were good. Uh, yeah. I I don't. Uh, although I met him, uh, the owner who was on the show, I, he wouldn't remember me from anybody because I didn't. It, I just went up there and asked for a beer. Right is all right. it was. So they were delicious, and I had their peppercorn ale, and that was phenomenal. So I think I had definitely that one too. need to. Uh, I keep an eye on their social media, and every now and then it pops back up on the tap list, but not as frequently as I would like to see it. This is a fun episode. Paradise Brewing started as a, uh, a homebrew shop, mm-hmm. and then they grew into a brewery, and the, the, the owner is, he's hands-on. He's oh, yeah. a hands-on oh, owner, yeah. and yeah. he had an assistant brewer at that location, and then recently it was announced that there's going to be a location in Wilmington, yes. which is the old old firehouse Firehouse. brewery yeah i do like what their plans for the second location and i apologize i kind of stepped over you on on that one i'm just 
excited about what, uh, no, what they're bringing go. to the tap room. So really cool concept. Um, not the most ADA friendly, but in order to get to the actual tap room, you go in on the ground, on the kind of like up a set of stairs onto the first floor. But then to get to the actual tap room to order your beers, you have to slide down a fire pole, which... I mean, best. I'll probably it's fall amazing. and break something, but my God, that's going to be so much fun. It's amazing. I'm kind of surprised they were able to get away with it. If uh, there are special permits or anything, or maybe they're just not telling anyone yeah, that it's going to be used. But, it's but yeah, um, they're hoping to open in the fall. But as with everything with COVID, all that kind of stuff, construction, licensing, permits, all that kind of stuff is still up in the air. But keep an eye out for when they open the Wilmington location and get ready to slide down a fire pole. It'll be awesome. Yeah. So the the Outcast podcast follows even though they're they're pretty free flowing in their conversation, but it mm-hmm. does follow a good outline. So they show up, they talk about the space, what do they see when they're there, how many seats that are are there in in the building, the mm-hmm. facility, uh, and then they let you know What's nearby within a five-mile radius as far as craft breweries to drink at? Mm -hmm. And it was pretty interesting to find out what you can get to within a five-mile radius of that place. I was surprised. I've I've been to several of the breweries that are within five miles of Paradise, and I didn't realize they were that close. Right. Yeah, so... So that's interesting. You, you could make a nice afternoon out of it. There's a value there, and that mm. that's what's cool is when you listen to the show. It's not just it's not just fun. It's not just about beer, and mm-hmm. you know there's there's value there. We you come away with a little bit of education, even though you may not have wanted to, you know, really learn anything. Well, you you kind of do if you just listen. Yeah, yeah. What I what I like about the Outcast podcast mm-hmm. is I feel like it's a really nice melding of what you get from Cincinnati Brewcast and from Shift Beers. You get the people that, you get a group of people that are sitting around drinking, having a good time, talking about the beer, enjoying the beer. But then you also get talks with people that work at those breweries, be it, you know, one of the bartenders, the brewer, the owner, and you you get to hear them dive more in depth into the beer, kind of rating the beer, what they're drinking which falls more on the Cincy Brewcast side of, of the spectrum. Right, and I get the feeling, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong here, but usually what happens is the Bruise Traveler, which is an alias for one of our mm-hmm. friends, one yes. of our friends from the show, which has another show which we'll talk about. But the Bruise Traveler, I think, just goes up and makes a friend, makes a buddy, and then basically ambushes the owner of the place, and then they end up on uh, uh, with a microphone talking yeah. about the show. And so they had a guest on the show prior to... I'm going to back up a little bit. They had a guest on the show named Bird. That's his alias. And Bird was a brewer in the Cincinnati craft beer area at a brewery that is not around anymore, but they were located in Blue Ash Mm -hmm. and is a friend of the Outcast. He's an Outcast. That's what it is. He's part of the Outcast podcast. Right. He's actually what started the entire Bruce Traveling Outcast podcast. Yes, they do talk about that as well. Uh, and they mention his 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 lady, his wife. Uh, they uh, mention her as Care Bear. Mm-hmm. And uh, Julia, if you had to come up with an alias for the Outcast podcast for your Josh, what would his alias be? Ooh, my Josh's alias. I would say Bunny. Okay. Yeah, right. and for anyone that that has met my and I and I say my Josh because there is a Josh that's part of shift beers and whenever i say oh josh and i some people are like think it's not my josh they think it's shift beers josh so right that happens. i like to i like to clarify um but i would call him bunny and that would mostly be because of a certain aesthetic that he is rocking right now that i love okay absolutely love it fair enough yeah what about you if uh if your wife had a had an alias for the outcast podcast what would it be Oh, gosh. You put me on the spot. Hey, you put me on the spot. Uh, I don't know. Trophy? There you go. That is a damn good one. So uh, they talk about, uh, you know, their friend who's joining them mm-hmm. as a guest. And then they go and they ambush uh, the owner of Paradise. And they start talking about things. Well, prior to, prior to that, they do, they do shine praise on Bird. And uh, the Bruce Traveler compliments him on his liquid. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's another man complimenting a man on his liquid. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. not not awkward at all, but you know. Yeah. It's and it's twenty twenty one. Get over it, people. Right. It's it's fine. Yeah. And then they have the owner on and they talk about the space, they talk about how many seats are inside, then they talk about how many seats you can fit on his uh big deck. Yeah, yeah, he apparently has a very big deck. Yeah, so he's proud cool. he's proud of his deck. And this is something that harkens back to an episode or two ago of our show where Ship Pierce I mean, had a had a, a bit of a deck talk. Yeah, there as was well. some deck mm. deck talk. Um, mm. So uh, Paradise very proud of their deck. They can satisfy a lot of people on their deck. On their with yeah. with their deck. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think the the global feeling about decks is it's not necessarily how big your deck is. Thank you. It's how you use it. That's wonderful. Yeah. It's a wonderful sentiment. It Uh, really is. And it's true. I will say it is true. Thank you. And so (laughs) they go into a bit of when they, uh, the the area around Paradise has supported them very well. And they really thank their patrons. Mm -hmm. And they go into how that looks and, um, you know, how they seem to be a, uh, a babysitting stop for adult males, which is fine. It's all yeah, good. Yeah. Everybody has always made it home. Uh, all the wives have come to pick their husbands back up. But when they talk about expanding to the uh, to the other site, they talk about many challenges that are very strange and unique to a building that used to be a firehouse. Which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. We're not going to go into all of those things. You can listen to the show for those things. And you should listen to the show because it was... Both interesting and also, I mean, you feel for them with all the work that they need to do to get that building up and running as a second location. Yeah, they, they there was one uh, part of a conversation where there were probably 65 kegs left in a cooler that was no longer getting electricity. Mm-hmm. Over a year. That were f- a year and a half. year and a half, yes. That were full of beer that had to be just dumped. And if that doesn't make a craft beer drinker cry, I don't know what does. Well, there's a lot also extra into that where you think about the equipment, what needs to happen in the equipment. As a brewer, I'm just, um, it makes me sad. But it also makes me excited about the fact that somebody is taking something and, and bringing it back to life. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, so that's very, very exciting to me. It was a very good episode. They, they follow their pattern where they, they talk about the building. They talk with the owner, and then they talk about the beer, mm-hmm. and they close the segment talking about the beer, and everything was very, very good. Yeah, if you're going to trust their palates, which with I an assortment with yeah. an assortment of people that you know, get around and are, are not afraid to tell you what they think about something, why wouldn't you trust them? And they're not afraid to say this isn't really my style. I really don't enjoy this particular style that much, but I appreciate what they what they do. So they can't fault it. They're not going to do a one-star rating on Untapped because they drink an IPA and they don't like IPAs. They give a very fair assessment based off of their palates, as you said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that was a really fun and informative show about a brewery that... Not a lot of people know about, well, but they should, yeah. It's small. It's it a is. small brewery, but it's certainly worth... It's it's certainly worth the 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 trip, yeah. The trip, mm-hmm. yeah. And I can't wait for the the second location. That'll be fun. Yep. And it'll just add to everything that's happening around here in a positive way. Agreed. That, I mean, I guess that that pretty much is what I had for this this current episode of the Outcast podcast. But I do want to say that everyone needs to be aware for an upcoming episode that. A lot of your favorite podcasters, craft beer podcasters, were a part of. They uh, they put on a show live at Fretboard Brewing the other week, earlier this week. That's right. Uh, uh, a couple episodes ago, uh, Fretboard sponsored our entire uh, show. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Fretboard. And, yes. uh, you know, as wheels go, it'll come round and round. So hopefully at some point we will be sponsored again by Fretboard Brewing. Uh, it was a blast to be invited yes. as a show, yes. as a podcast. Uh, to participate in the Outcast, uh, Brew Travelers Outcast podcast live on stage at Fretboard Brewing. Mm-hmm. I had a blast. 
I had a blast. They brought up, um, besides Marco and, and myself, but uh, Diamond Bell from the Beer is Not for Boys podcast, which, Diamond, you said two weeks you would have an episode out. Clock is ticking. It is getting close. All right, Diamond. We have you. Um, the, there, that episode has not been released yet, but when it is, you will be on record as saying you will have an episode out. That brings up a good question. Is it two weeks from when that the Live Outcast podcast episode is published and downloadable? Ah. Or was she saying two weeks from when well, when it was live and she was on stage? I think I think the commitment happened live. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. So we're we're coming around that date there. Yeah. Diamond. It was a, the show was a lot of fun to do. It was great to be on stage and to have them talk about what would you know, what would our Bruce Traveler nicknames be, you know, if we had them. And they tried to get us to pick our own and we said, y- you don't pick your own nickname. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not how it works. Yeah. And and the wolf who was sitting on stage with everyone agreed yes. we don't pick our own nicknames. They just have to happen naturally. So uh so we'll see what they come up with. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was it, a lot of was, fun. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Definitely. And then when it comes out, we'll cover it in, in its entirety. In right. its in entirety, yes. So we will hey, re-experience it as you guys are experiencing it for maybe the first time if you were not at Fredboard that night. Yeah, and hey, Mark, uh, thanks for the invite. Uh, truly appreciate it. And anytime uh, you need some podcast support, we're here for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the best at Adina. I'm sure I'm going to run into you at a bar somewhere soon. Oh yeah. You know, and uh, Julia, Marco. never know, never know. Maybe you will too. I would like that. I would like that a lot. Um, I guess to kind of wrap up a little bit of the uh, the podcast that that one of our friends, the Bruce Traveler, is part of. Um, we touched. We went into it, we went in depth on the Hustle and Brews episode that they did live at Fretboard a few episodes ago. That's right. So Hustle and Brews. So I know we we introed Outcast podcast mm-hmm. and what it's about, and I know we talked about Ship Beers podcast, what it's mm-hmm. about. Uh, Hustle and Brews, just to give you a quick snippet of what it's about, is it is a entrepreneur, uh, Matt Damaris. It's his show that he does most of the time with his wife. But, you know, he doesn't like to be called an entrepreneur. No, he doesn't. He, As an entrepreneur, it, he really is, but he doesn't like to call himself an entrepreneur. He, he really likes to think of himself as a hustler, baby. Oh, yeah. And so he's a hustler. And what he does is he finds other people that own their businesses. And he wants to interview them about their come up. Uh, How they come up. What's their business? How they get into it? What's their why? Why are they doing it? And then he talks about it around craft beer. He usually invites them or he usually uh, um, has that interview with them at their chosen craft beer place of choice. Mm-hmm. So uh, Hustle & Brew's live show was recorded at Fretboard. and One of our favorite sponsors of the show. That's right. And yeah, they had um, Matt interviewed Nathan from Hot Sauce for Mortals, which is a local small batch hot sauce company, if you couldn't figure out by the name. Um, talked to him. We're not going to go too in-depth into this because we did dig did dig into this episode uh, right after it was done live. It is now available for you to download and listen to. I strongly suggest listening to it because it is a great episode full of uh, of a, a hot wing eating contest. There were hot chocolates, like literal habanero, it wasn't habanero, Carolina Reaper chocolates yeah, that yeah. they were offering up to people. Um, I ended up buying a bottle of every one of the hot sauces that Nathan the owner and the creator of Hot Sauce for Mortals had, and I have been loving them. The one made with coffee is hands down my favorite, but really good stuff. It was a great interview. The interaction with the audience was spectacular. Um, there was a lot of craft milk that um, that was yes. not drank. Artis- artisan milk. Artisan milk. Um, yeah, d- but check it out. Listen to it. Listen to our previous episodes to hear our take on it, and download and listen to. The Hustle and Brews live at Fretboard episode with Nathan from Hot Sauce for Mortals. That's right. So go and listen to Hustle and Brews. Go and subscribe uh, just like you should. Listen and subscribe to Truth, Beer, and Podsequences. Share it with your friends. Uh, rate and review. Please do. But what I do want to say is another thank you and shout out to Fretboard uh, for 
doing the Monday Night Podcast uh, theme, really. Uh, th- this has been a really fun interaction and experience for all the ones that I've been present at. Yeah, and agreed. If you just go to Fretboard's uh, social media pages or Fretboard's website and scroll the list of podcasts that are going to take the stage, if a topic or a show is something that you're interested in, but plan on getting out there because yeah. it's a lot of fun. Uh, Matt Damaris is uh, hustling and brews. I mean, there was a DJ up there, you know, scratching. There was... Uh, the episode it, that they recorded this week with uh, Cincy Beer Cat, they had like full plush armchairs and, and like an end table with a lamp on it as part of the stage setup. I mean, they are really kicking ass with making sure that the podcast that they have perform, uh, performing, presenting, I'm not quite sure what the proper term is for live podcasting, but they really make sure that they're set up for success. Yeah, it, when it, they're it's, there, it's wonderful. It's really fun. It's a lot of fun. So I, I strongly encourage all of our listeners, and thank you uh, to my wife and to my mom for listening, and uh, for and all to my of Josh. The, there you go, and then to all of your friends that you're sharing the show with. Yeah. Um, thank you, and go and check that out. And never know, maybe at one of these upcoming episodes, you'll see Truth Beer and Consequences, Julie and I there. Well, Marco, it looks like your glass is empty. My glass is nearly empty. Should we take a quick break before we wrap up uh, today's episode with our final two podcasts of the night? I'm down for that. Let's do it. We'll be back. We'll be back. All right. Welcome back to Truth, Beer, and Consequences. Thank you uh, for sticking with us through the break, which we uh, eliminated, basically, and just put a little bit of a, a, a tune to to rejoin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Julie and I have freshened up our glasses it is true uh ladies first julia what are you drinking i am drinking a beer selected for me by my favorite podcast co-host uh, it is virtue it is esoteric's belgian double and i've had it it's been a it's been a while since i've had this but i remember it being absolutely fantastic so i'm really si- really excited to dig into uh into this class looks absolutely fantastic uh and what I, did you get a i believe i have had that as well. Uh, let's see. I got. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> awesome, Julia. Uh, let's see. What? Oh, I got um, West Side Brewing's Oktoberfest, the Marzen, five point two percent ABV from West Side Brewing. Julia, I'd imagine you had this by volume. Yes, I, I have had a lot of it. It is delicious. I love it. And uh, hey, Westside, if any of you are, are listening in, we would love for you to sponsor a whole episode or even just a beer segment. That would be so hit us up really at fantastic. Beer Pod. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, really good. So really, I do want to really give. Good. I do before we kind of get into our last two podcasts of the night. Did want to give another shout out to our hosts here at BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery, and also say that on October the 9th from two to eight p.m. Buy a ticket for their Flavor Town Festival. Beer festival, lots of beers, lots of food, lots of amazing music. Show up, support them, drink until you can't drink anymore, and see if you can beat the shift beer uh, team with the burp count. Yes, and uh, I know somebody who has a ticket to Flavor Town, Julia. Who's that? Me. No way. Yep, I have my ticket to Flavor Town. That is awesome. So. October 9th, I actually have a trail race that I'm doing in Indianapolis that morning, so I am not... Don't remember being invited to that, Julia. If you, I believe they still have some spots left. If you want to do a six-and-a-half-mile trail race in Indianapolis for um, a light-up medal, the medal has LED lights in it. Well, I'm going to be it's here at Flavortown. Be... We're splitting our presents. It is, you, yes. Your presence was requested, probably, at this trail run. Yes. My presence, uh, I just paid uh, to be here. Uh, you would although, think that they should almost sponsor you to be there, seeing as we should, are such a big part of of their facility anymore. Probably should have a discussion with our producers, probably and should. maybe they could do a little more sponsoring. Just saying. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. And I don't want anyone to think badly because we haven't asked them. This is very true. 
So. We have not asked anything of them other than what's good on, on your tap list right now. That's right. And then and we pay for those beers ourselves. So I do not want yeah. any wrong expectations that we are getting anything free other than the use of, of their space, yes. and, which we appreciate wholeheartedly. Absolutely. And you know what? I mean, how can you beat the scent here? I mean, the oh smell. Oh, my God. What the Cintas guy does for this place is amazing. Shout I out to it. local business, Cintas, uh, oh, yeah. uh, home office here in uh, Cincinnati. Uh, right, Actually, right down the street. Not far from uh, uh, Sonder Brewing, award, award-winning brewery, and another And a beer sponsor for one of our earlier episodes That's as true. well. So yeah. thank you, Sonder, again. That strawberry jalapeno IPA was amazing. It was, it was fantastic. Loved it. It was really great. I had to go back and get more. You did. I saw the pictures. Yeah. Injected it right into my, right into my veins. It was amazing. What are we get? Uh, what are we going to cover next, Julia? I think we need to go over the craft parenting podcast. Yeah, this this week's episode. We're not going to do a real deep dive into this episode. Um, there wasn't a ton of beer talk in the episode, and since this is a craft beer podcast, we do want to focus more on on the beers. But because they do support us, and we want to support as many local podcasts as we can. Wanted to give a huge shout out uh, to Joe. This episode was all about his turning ancient anniversary. Yeah. The the title is Joe Turns Ancient. Yes. And, uh, so it's Joe's birthday. Happy fifty fifth to Happy you, Joe. Happy fifty fifth birthday, Joe. Glad uh, you congratulations made it this far. on being ancient. Uh, you already passed that big five zero mm-hmm. where you have to get that special doctor's check for the special area. Oh boy! So, and congratulations uh, to the family. I mean, you have some youngsters there for being that old. Yeah. Uh, and for those of you who are in our audience that have smaller children or are looking for shows uh, about just fun or, or craft beer uh, involved or parenting they do a, a meld mix and mm-hmm. uh, it's it's worth your listen uh, and as far as beer is concerned uh, it was it was a little bit light on the beer and more on the Joe and the activities and mm-hmm. the, the fact that this is the second birthday this month for that family yes, yes. so can, happy birthday Joe uh, look forward to uh, our birthday shout out which by the way Julie and I share the same birthday which we did not know until we started the show that's true but we share the same birthday just not the same birth year correct you are 10 years younger than i am i uh, not even close but i appreciate 20 years. that there you go all right i am a babe still baby still i don't know i'm uh, something yes yeah, so we are looking forward <laughs> to that shout out um you know several months in the future so we'll let you know about that yeah. congratulations on your birthday so as far as craft beer is concerned uh, they were drinking Spaten. Nice. Another Oktoberfest. Keep with the season. Keep with the season. And also keep with the theme. I mean, this is a, a German Oktoberfest. This isn't yes. one from Westside. Yes. Or, well, I mean, you know. but, but Westside is a very traditional. They they do their Märzen in a very traditional way. For sure. So it, it, it is. But my point is it's from, from Germany. It's from Germany. Okay. I, was I more gotcha. more my point. I gotcha. I'm not dogging on all of our craft beers. Uh, Oktoberfest, no, because what I would say is anybody who wants to know how that goes, you can go back and listen to a year ago from Cincy Brewcast mm-hmm. and find out that uh, maybe one of your favorite or not favorite uh, podcast co-hosts was on the show with the Gnarly Gnome. And, you know, we find that there's only very little reason other than for the, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 throwback to and the, and the cheers to uh, Germany, uh, you can find delicious, amazing uh, Oktoberfest here, oh, yeah. right here in Cincinnati. So, Joe and, uh, well, I mean, part of date night, there was a date night, mm-hmm. and they went to Taft's Brewporium. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. I've so, been there oh, many, many a time, love that place. Along with having uh, Spaten, they mm-hmm. went to Taft's Brewporium, had some beer, and then the rest of it was really centered around what it should be, uh, Joe's birthday. Yeah. So those of you who want to check that out, go check out Craft uh, Parenting Podcast and the Support Local Podcasts. And uh, Julie's looking at me because I happen to be uh, stretching and 
putting my arm he's, on a particular four pack of beer. I'm he's not fondling taking my it. beer. I'm not taking the four pack, Julia. Okay. There are plenty okay. on the little, shelf. I was, it's I was just, a little It's concerned. one of those like stretching and, you know, sort there's, of. There's something to rest your hand on. So during during one of our breaks, I went ahead and did uh, some beer shopping to bring home some, some beer for, for my Josh and, and myself. And they are sitting in in a case on the table and it is should have brought that yeti cooler should have brought the yeti cooler thank you fretboard again for the yeti cooler i still haven't seen it but uh, i'm glad mark is enjoying it but yeah marco is uh stretching his arms and and kind of fondling all over the uh the pack tech for mad tree's most recent tree search release which i'm very excited to try i'm excited to try it as well and shout out to mad tree if you ever want to be a beer sponsor for the show let just uh let us know you can catch us on all the social medias or email us at truth beer uh and consequences at gmail that's so wrong but i i really love how much you tried truth beer pod truth beer at pod. gmail.com truth beer or pod. at truth beer pod on all of the other big social medias so, Marco, you could I just think- if you could cut out that's so wrong, <laughs> you could probably play that. You could probably just hit me up like that's so wrong. That's so wrong. Anyway, that's okay. So wrong. What do we have next after covering uh, Joe's birthday craft beer parenting podcast? Uh, the only thing we have left is to go over all things gnarly gnome. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So, because you are not on the Instagrams. I'm not, but I was with the Gnarly Gnome last Wednesday at Zane Lamprey's comedy show at former former sponsor of the show, Fretboard Brewing. Yes. I was front row, sitting next to the Gnome. I got a fist bump from Zane Lamprey. Oh, that's exciting. You are wearing a Zane Lamprey shirt tonight? Yeah. Yeah. I haven't taken it off. Oh. No, I'm that... joking. This is the first time I've worn it I was going to say, I, I didn't think the Cintas guy would let this place have... A bit of a funk to it, no. so now it. it no, I took it home. This is the first time I've worn it. All good. All Zane good. signed it. What? Yeah, he signed it to my boo. Nice. Yeah, it was great. So all things gnome. Um, his Instagram story this week. Well, he does a couple each week, so I don't want to say that this is the only Instagram story that Never you might him. find from the gnome. You got to get on the grams, man. It's the happening place. I used to eat Teddy Grams. Those are good. I like the cinnamon ones. Yeah, those are good. Those are very good. So anyways, anyway. <laughs> yeah, the grams. So, so the grams. Um, Gnome cracked into some brujito from Sam Adams. Uh, it is made with lime, mint, and it is aged in rum barrels. And it sounded like the perfect summer drink if you don't want a straight up beer. It sounds amazing. How do we acquire this? You can go to the Sam Adams Tap Room in downtown Cincinnati. I don't know if that area is considered over the Rhine or downtown, but there, or you might be able to find it on the shelves at your local bottle shops. Maybe even Kroger. They distribute all over the place. Okay, I need to get my hands on some of that. You know, uh, those of you who follow the show know that we're big fans of Sam Adams. Uh, and, I mean, we're going to... We're going to do a little segment a little bit later, but mm-hmm. uh, that sounds amazingly delicious. I yes. need to get my hands on some of that. Yeah, the more Sam Adams we have, the better. Absolutely. The Absolutely. more Sam Adams we have, the better. The higher ABV Sam Adams we have, the better. The better. Yes. Just so we, if we could just, you know, just just collect and, and promote everything Sam Adams. I just, I just I'd, I'd love to Collect do and promote everything Sam Adams does into one beautifully designed vessel that holds 28% ABV At 20, goodness of what is his 24.5% out, uh, 24.5 ounces or 25.4 mm-hmm. ounces but that something in the even nature. that would not encompass all of the love we have for Sam Adams and what they do no no it's no. It, it's merely scratching the surface it is it is yeah it would be almost a a utopic experience for us to be able to to share with Sam Adams what what they mean for us, but we'll get into that. Uh, it would be. We'll get into that uh, at the end of the episode. But for now, we need to get back to. Oh yeah, let's go back. Now. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'm gonna wipe away. I'm so emotional. Okay, go ahead. Because it was the best day ever. We'll oh, get yeah. we'll get to that. We'll get to that on the Gnarly Gnome YouTube channel, which is uh, I believe youtubecom slash gnome. He drank some sake, which is very different from what he normally drinks, but. The purpose of Prost is not to drink beer. It is to celebrate 
all drinking of all types. Maybe wine, which I don't believe he's done a wine yet. Uh, we want to do that. We definitely want to do we that. We want to do that. Um, okay. Actually, I have an idea. I'm going to throw it out on the show right now. Let's do it. So yesterday, at uh, when we were interacting for the Weekly Pint, and I know I'm switching around a little bit, but since you said wine and we're doing this, I would love to have... All of the shows that we talk about, the gnarly gnome, all of us at a holiday situation and have wine and have all of our mics and our communication, you know, all of the the podcast recording stuff. And we all record a wine episode this year, this holiday season. I love it. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. We just need to get everybody else on board. Okay. Back so, to, uh, what are you on, the Insta uh, Insta books or something? No, I've already moved on to Prost. Oh, yeah, and, Prost. And okay. uh, drinking sake, which I don't, I don't believe I have ever had, so I have no experience with, I couldn't, I don't want to say I couldn't relate to it because he shared a lot of information about it, a lot of good, um, good qualities about it that make me want to try it. I just don't know how to find a bottle of sake that would be good so that I'm not drinking that's the, the tough shift part. beers version of it and exactly. I it from the get go. So that's the tough part. I, I had uh, my sister who lives in Texas and my brother in law came in town a few years back and we went to Jungle Gyms or as some shows call it Jingle Jams. I went to and we picked up some sake. Okay. But we had no idea if we were drinking the bush light of sake or if we were drinking the Utopias of sake. So, uh, I I don't know, and it was fine. Mm-hmm. It was fine. I don't I don't understand. I or I couldn't. It didn't stick out to me as far as why this is appealing and needs to be put into my repertoire. Mm-hmm. As far as yes, I am a sake drinker. You know, and I so, think it depends on the experience you're looking for and the. I don't want to say cultural experience that you're looking for, but I think that it is something that if you want to, like you said, expand your drinking repertoire, expand that profile of the things that you do drink, have tried drinking, it is something that is on my list. It is just not something that, like I said, I've ever really set out to get because I just don't know enough about it. But by watching this episode of Prose, he went into the different, I don't want to say levels, but the different strengths almost of sake like there are some that depending on how much of the rice is is taken off you get kind of the the base level a higher quality highest quality so I feel like by watching this episode I definitely have more of a guideline as to what to look for if I do go out to to buy a bottle okay yeah. Awesome. Hey, Gnome, if you want to sponsor a segment of the show, just drop off some sake here at uh, BC's Montgomery Bottle, BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery, uh, care of Truth Beer and Consequences, and we're happy to try it and let you know whether you're a lunatic or whether you're mm-hmm. right on point with, you know, your uh, apparently just uh, zealous love yeah. of the beverage. Well, and you know when we record, we would love to have a glass with you. That's true, too. He does know. He does. Actually, he offered to be here. Not today, but in general, he offered okay. to be here. So hey, open invitation. Just know that you're going to have to share a mic with uh, with Marco. Yeah, it's fine. No, it's Unless fine. he wants to use his awesome podcasting equipment and then just give me the file to edit. and I we'll think maybe there. that's more along the lines yeah. of what he was thinking, but which means that we would actually have to invite him. Oh, so, oh there's, there's the problem. No, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. Hey, good stuff. Yes. So let's move on to Cincy Brewcast. Yep. Yeah, he talked with uh, with Garrett from Streetside, and I love everything Streetside does. I have heard of this Garrett. Have you? Yeah. Nice. I, I don't think I've actually met him, but I have heard of this Garrett. I have heard of him as well on, on I believe, just other podcasts from the Gnarly Gnome. Um one of the big things that I want to throw out right up front, because it is this weekend, so depending on when you listen to this episode, it may be too late, but if you listen to this episode as it's released on Friday, it is Streetside's fifth anniversary, and they are celebrating September 24th through the 26th 
which again, depending on the magical time of podcasts, is either this weekend or you miss it entirely. Yeah. We're going to try and be a little bit better at that with letting some of our, or when we say some of our audience, everyone who listens is our audience. So all, we're all 10 of you. Thank you, mom. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Josh. Um, we're going to let you know about things upcoming mm -hmm. so that you have the opportunity you, to experience if, it. Together. If you're a person who listens when the show pops up, you can know that something's coming up. So the show was, is a good show. Oh, yeah. It digs into many things, uh, some things. I don't want to say get in the weeds a little bit, but for those who understand some of the challenges with the brewing aspects and things and some of the changes they made to, to uh, maximize their, their brewing ability. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also the, the revelation that they sort of went vertical and then had to figure a way with having to be able to, to, to go so vertical or brew so much, you know, what, how can, how can they diversify maybe a, a base beer Right. That was one of the things that I thought was, was really interesting, how they have big tanks, which means that they have so much room for activities, but they have to decide what is that activity. Is it going to be, they can't do as many kind of one-off small batch things depending on what they have upcoming, be it, you know, the, the anniversary beers that they want to brew, be it, you know, Demogorgon Day, which is going to be on October 30th which you will be able to buy the base of Demogorgon, which I don't think you've been able to do since they first came out with it two or three years ago. Yeah, I don't think you have. I think they cover that you haven't been able, able to. Able to, right. Um, and another another really interesting thing that came out of the podcast is during COVID, or I guess the height of COVID, since we are still in the midst of the, the pandemic. No, it's gone. Is it gone? No. Man, I, I, I really want it to be gone. I want to go back to to normal but right. but hey still everyone stay safe do what you can do to, to keep yourself and others safe uh during the the height of covid only f only about three or four batches of what they brewed were kegged which means they hit draft lines everything else that they did through most of 2020 some of 2021 was put into cans because it was how they were able to still get their beer out into the world and to you and I and to the other beer drinkers who wanted to continue to partake in in the amazing libations that Streetside creates. And they have a tent outside. I don't I haven't been there since the tent. I don't know what the size of the tent is, but they do talk about the fact that they have space and if you want outdoor space, they have outdoor space. Mm -hmm. Now I have been to Streetside. Yeah. Uh and this outdoor space they speak of, I'm curious to see what it is because I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, there's the front, well, which is very close to the street, and yes. then there's, like, the back. All right. I, I, I was in the past. I trust they know what they're doing. Well, they've already done it, and, well, and true, it's fine. True. Uh, whatever. I, I haven't been there, but you go there. I mean, and, and what I mean is our listeners go there, support them. It all sounds great. Uh, Garrett sounds very confident in understanding his vision and, and what he wants to do going forward and what he wanted to do, you know, going through and coming out of the worst parts, the scariest parts of COVID, right? Because right. those are... you didn't know what was going to happen. Correct. That, that The scariest parts. I mean, now we're to the point where we're, we're, we know this is still a problem and still a thing, but... We, we try to navigate uh, normal reality as much as we can yeah, uh, and, with this. And they understand that there are some people that are perfectly fine with being around big crowds and being packed inside of a building shoulder to shoulder like you used to be on a super busy day at a brewery. But they also understand and, and appreciate that some people are not comfortable with that yet, which is why they have a big outdoor space that they've set up with a tent that is going to be in place until I believe you said at least through 2022, 2023, depending on permits. I didn't quite. Yeah, that was really, catch they, up, but he but did, they do. They did discuss that and mm -hmm. they have, you know, solo heavy metal, um, 
artists mm -hmm. uh, come in yes. um, to you know sort of you know bring up the or bring down or or continue the the theme mm -hmm. of you know the 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 brewery itself or Demogorgon or whatever. Right. I don't know where you find solo heavy metal artists, but they did. They, they found did, them. yeah, and that was that was pretty impressive. And and some of the the clips that they played to kind of amp up to kind of what we're getting into with Demogorgon Day again, October thirtieth. They did say that they were going to have every variant that they have ever done of Demogorgon available again. Yeah, and there's some fun things for people mm -hmm. like there's, you know, um, like a gauged ear contest. Yeah, yeah. Where you know you can maybe win a prize um, right. for your gigantic gauged ears. They're going to have a guess the number of kegs, or I'm sorry, not kegs, the number of barrels for their barrel aging program. Guess the number of barrels that they have, and the closest person to that barrel without going over in true Price of Right fashion will win a free pint of beer. And just a tip for all of you listeners, it is a little over 125 barrels that they have currently. They nice. don't know where they're going to keep any more, but... And they keep, yeah, they keep, uh, they, they, uh, Garrett, I guess it's Garrett, right? I mean, yeah. uh, he keeps ordering more, uh, yeah. but they don't know where they're going to put them. But. And these are all kinds of barrels. So the beers that are going to be in these will be infused with everything from rum to cinnamon whiskey to your typical bourbon barrel to wine to port. Any Tabasco. Tabasco. I mean, any flavor profile that you could possibly want. Is in these barrels. I'm I'm yeah. really excited to see what it was. What a, it was a really good episode, and I just yeah. I'll take you a little behind the curtain. I mean the 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 episode was, according to the noon when I saw him on Wednesday, he recorded this on Tuesday. I mean they got together at about nine a.m. Yes. So I mean they were like schnockered Before by like ten thirty. Oh yeah. Yeah. Ten thirty. Ten forty five. I mean they were just blitzed. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? Such is uh, like to to much is given, much is uh, uh, what is this saying, Julia? To to much is given, much is not much taken. No, no. I mean, I have the quote that Gnome, a, a beautiful quote from Gnome that I kind of want to close the the Cincy Brewcast segment with. But I don't know if that's the quote that you're talking about. I don't about. know. It's, it's something to the point of much is given, much is responsible. I don't remember whatever. I mean, whatever. Yeah. I mean, they said it while they were, you know, three sheets in, so. Speaking of three sheets, it was really fun uh, hanging out with uh, the Gnarly Gnome, uh, Matt Damaris, and several of our friends. Del Hall nice. uh, showed up uh, to uh, watch Zane Lamprey at Fretboard Brewing. Fretboard Brewing, uh, previous sponsor of the show, uh, shout out to them. Mm -hmm. uh, they are just doing fantastic things, winning awards, and... Uh, just and having incredible events at their space, yeah, all the time. Really great, really, really, really great. So, why don't we wrap it up with the gnome's quote that I loved yeah, so much? Wrap it up. All right. So, gnome said, "Here, here is gnome's tip of the episode: Don't get in people's buttholes if you can tell they're uncomfortable around people. Basically, don't be an asshole." What else did you have, Marco? No, that's it. Uh, Julia, what I'm going to do is, mm -hmm. as we're about to conclude our time here today at BC's uh, Bottle Lodge Montgomery, I'm going to get a Sam Adams 513. Ooh, Sam nice. Adams 513, which is an American lager. Delicious. The Boston Beer Company. It's really fantastic. And don't and you have a Sam Adams story that you wanted to wrap up the episode with? I do. Uh, right. But what I want to do is... We have a, a guest, a friend of the show. We do. And I'm going to let that friend, that guest, take the stage, wrap it up. And I think oh. they cover everything that we want to do when we wrap up the show. So um, take it away, Morgan Freeman. Hello. This is Morgan Freeman. I want to give you an account of Marco and his son. Marco and his son, two years ago, went to Sam Adams Tap Room in Cincinnati, where Marco paid for an ounce of Utopias. 
His son was there, enjoyed the day, and Marco was pleased. And as they took the ride home, Marco turned to his son and asked, Vincent, did you enjoy the day? And he said, it was the best day ever. So Sam Adams and Boston Beer, as you're about to release Utopias, please consider helping Marco recreate this beautiful moment with his son and send two bottles of Utopias to Julia and Marco at Truth, Beer, and Consequences. Catch us on all of your uh, social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can catch us on uh, Truth, Beer, and Consequences uh, at gmail.com. 